tech allows everybody to be connected at any point from wherever you are globally or otherwise. Everyone needs efficiency. Everyone is looking for enhanced performance. AI can assist you if you know how to use it properly. You can't become complacent and rely on it fully, but it's changed the game in my perspective. Those law firms or those in-house that take it up, their lives are made much easier. Welcome to Lexer Podcast. Sarah Malik, I've been following you on LinkedIn. You're everywhere, traveling, writing, teaching. You have your own law firms. It's amazing. Tell me more about yourself. Firstly, thank you, Lexa, for hosting me here. So yes, most people know me through LinkedIn, and I do all of what you say, but I also do other things. So as well as being a lawyer and having the law firm and teaching and writing, um, I'm also a tech enthusiast. I do a lot of stuff on the tech space, and I have for a number of years. I was talking about the metaverse four years ago when it wasn't even a thing. Recently, I've expanded into the sports and fashion side, which is a lot of fun, so I like to kind of keep work fun, my motto being work hard, play hard. Um, I'm a person who enjoys traveling, I enjoy um, speaking, I enjoy um, giving back, I enjoy ensuring that the next generation knows or the seeds of thought are planted in their mind. Yeah. So I'm delighted to be here with Lexa, you're doing great things. I was at your branding event in, um, in, in uh, uh, DIFC, which was great, so thank you for having me here. And um, I look forward to, to our interview. Thank you very much. Let's kick off this episode today. Sarah, we've been witnessing a lot of use of legal tech within law firms and in-house legal departments. Everyone needs efficiency. Everyone is looking for enhanced performance in their organizations. My question is, how has legal tech evolved over your career? Um, over my career, so my career is about a quarter of a century old, so I can really tell you how it was years. 25 years ago to where we are now. And I come from a generation where everything was paper-based. You know, there was no such thing as, as, as you know, uh, bundles that were, were, were done, uh, e-bundling or otherwise. And one of my very first jobs in law, I was a paralegal on a massive litigation, a cross-border litigation, and we had something like 80 paralegals or 100 paralegals. And our job was to go through PCs that had been fed disclosure of documents they were scanned in. And manually, we had to read these documents and pick out keywords and then write down and tell the partners, OK, in, in a particular document in folder C6 on the computer, this word appears because they had to disclose those documents to the other side. Now you can imagine, fast forward 25 years and how AI has taken over, that would just never happen. You do not need 100 paralegals being paid and then billing the client to look for words in a document manually, where AI can do that in a matter of seconds from thousands and millions of documents that there's no way you know, 1,000 paralegals could do together. So that's a, that, that's a kind of emergence I've seen from where we were and where we're at. I come from a generation where we used to get instructions by fax. Many lawyers today wouldn't know what that means, where you get something that comes through a fax machine, a paper. This is where you are in court tomorrow. We used to dictate into these little dictation machines, and that was really quite revolutionary, that somebody could type up what we've said. I remember when tech first became a thing, or even the internet became a thing, and you had the dial-up internet with the noise, and um, you know, suddenly we could get emails on our phones, and we got smartphones. That was revolutionary. But even from that to where we are today and how you know, we can have templates, we can have document management, we can have contract management, we can have um, accountability uh, and visibility and transparency of what anybody anywhere worldwide is doing on a particular document for a law firm. I mean, there's been a massive growth and AI has played a huge part, I think, in helping the profession to get much more productive, to make sure that you know, they're cost effective. And it's opened the client's involvement in the space because clients can see exactly what's being done. Yeah. So you know, I, when I look back and I remember some of the tasks we had to do, uh, nowadays um, lawyers would never be hired to do that because it's not a job anymore. Yeah. And I'm not for one minute suggesting that all jobs are going to be overtaken by AI. But in a quarter of a century, 
And especially in more recent times, I've seen a massive like, shift and growth and how AI has really helped our industry generally. Now that that's interesting because w w one of the jobs within a law firm is basically to collaborate between the managing partner, the partners, the associates, the junior associates, and so on and so forth. How, how did legal tech really uh, help in achieving a better collaboration between these hierarchical uh, statuses? Well, it's because tech allows everybody to be connected at any point from wherever you are globally or otherwise. So you could have a huge law firm that has you know, spaces everywhere, that has um, offices everywhere, and you need some accountability from the top of you know, what's going on. Documents can be looked at in real time from anybody anywhere in the world. You can have the whole life cycle of a contract, know who's worked on what where. All of that in terms of there's no way a managing partner can know everything everyone's doing, but they can click on and see what's been done just by the use of tech. And that's a much more accurate description than they're ever going to get from somebody giving somebody a performance appraisal or otherwise of the work they're doing. They can actually see yeah. in real time or otherwise or go back and see who's doing what where. So the, the terms of the interaction, the connectivity, it makes it, it makes remote working very possible. It makes globalization very possible. It allows lawyers to transact and have cases in, in different jurisdictions because everybody can access the same kind of material at the same time, only through tech. Now, that was never going to happen if you're basically, you know, I'll just send you a fax and have a look at that fax and then we'll look at what we're looking at. You know, let's put it on the screen. Let's all work on the same time. Let's do the amends together. And the same way a managing partner or anybody who's in charge of a team can be sat on vacation and they need to dial into their team, you can get anybody from anywhere in the world and everybody jump on a call. The only thing you need to be wary of is the time zones, you know. And, and maybe it's a good thing or a bad thing, but what AI has done is, you know, we can connect Australia with Canada, with UK, with Beirut, and some people that's four o'clock in the morning and some it's eight in the evening. So whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, we, we're, we're 24 hour accessible. Absolutely. Now, and now, do you think that this revolution, right, introduced new business models for law firms? Because we're witnessing, as you said, a new trend in how law firms operate. Do you think that legal tech has improved or has increased the, the number of business models available in the market for law firms? Absolutely. I think what you do here at Lexa, what, there's so many different apps, there's so many different um, platforms. It can, it's only enhanced legal practice. Legal practice at its very basic is all paper-based, mm -hmm. right? We love paper. Yeah. And it took me, even as a tech person, a long time to get out of that mindset of I need to highlight, I need to you know, post it, and realize that wh whatever we're doing, a lot of legal practice, it, there's a lot of cost in, in, in retaining a kind of old practice and not using mm -hmm. the tools that are available at, at our fingertips. There's a lack of productivity in having to have mundane tasks being done that AI can do very, very quickly. So we can use AI platforms to store information, to ex explore solutions for contract reviews, for predictive analysis. Mm -hmm. We have templates. A lot of the work is done. It makes our life much, Easy. much easier. And I think once law firms or industry generally get to understand, we had some training the other day even in our law firm, and I remember the juniors just being like, wow, I, I, I wish we had this at law school. You know, I said, well, you don't have it at law school because it'd be cheating. You, know, you don't have to actually apply any of your mind. But in real life practice, you've got all of these tools at your fingertips. So if you, you know, you, 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 you're half kind of competent, you can do a really great job because AI can assist you if you know how to use it properly. You can't become complacent and rely on it fully, but it's changed the game, in my perspective, for, for the legal world. Yeah, you know, one, one interesting uh, topic I, I would, would like to ask is basically the behavioral aspect when it comes to using legal tech by lawyers, whether they are in-house legal departments or they are law firms. What do you think the behavioral variable that affect the use of legal tech in the workplace? I think, again, the behavioral uh, depends on the understanding. Mm -hmm. So if you understand it, you're able to navigate your way. Or if you don't want to understand it or you, you're unable to, it's going to affect your usage of it. Yeah. So I think people are quietly surprised, sometimes openly surprised about how much they can do by using uh, legal tech. But I think there's still a, a gap in the market. I mm -hmm. think the knowledge is not fully there. I think the ability to make our lives easier and how we can do that with tech is not fully there. 
the awareness is not fully there. Those law firms or those in-house that take it up, their lives are made much easier. And if you go back and you do a review after a year and say, how's your productivity? How's your, your cost base? How's your profit base? How's your client satisfaction? And they do it from before they had the tech to after, you will see um, only positivity. That I can guarantee. Yeah. Because once you get your head around it, the behavioral issues are those when they don't understand how to use it or otherwise, or they fear the use of it because they think it's going to affect their um, time, they, they have to spend more time doing something, or they're going to have to replace lawyers with this. And it's a fear of the unknown. So the behavior will come down to how well versed and equipped you are and knowledgeable you are about the tech you're using. And I think that's on, on, on people like Lex or organizations like you to actually put the word out and say, it's really not that scary. And once you embrace it, your life is made much easier. We've been lately uh, working closely with, uh, with the universities and, and law students, as you mentioned in your previous answer, that uh, one, of the, one of the jobs of uh, legal tech enthusiasts and uh, uh, legal practitioners is to connect with this generation and to plant the seed with them and to basically teach them how to use legal tech from, a, from their early career stages. What do you think of this? Massively important. I think you can't escape that. And I think increasingly AI and tech are not only of interest to students, but there are courses generated. There are now providers that are providing specific courses for people to be able to navigate their way around. Um, I'm involved in something that, that's up and coming in the UK that will deal solely with AI and at a kind of degree level, um, a, a postgraduate and, a, and an undergraduate level. I think integrating AI, raising the awareness, letting them practically see it and use it is the only way that students or... I mean, the next generation, to be fair, I'm not sure they need to be taught as much. They know more about it than I do. Um, they know more... And Generation Z and X, it's, it, it's seamless. I've seen youngsters, um, I mean like 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds, um, put together a presentation or a slide, like it would take me forever... In five minutes, they've got 18 slides. Why then are their way around the tech? <laughs> and I say, even to my own children, can you just tell me how you did that? Because, you know, we spent hours trying to put these slides together. You've done that in about five minutes. You have graphics, you have this. How have you done that? But they know their way around. But I think it's important that it's, it's um, a part of mainstream education. I'd go so far as to say that we need to teach. And it's not just in law, generally. Students individuals, anyone entering the job market need to be able to work with AI. The same way we would say, and we'd expect if somebody's interviewing for a job, you know, can you work with Microsoft Word and Office and Excel and PowerPoint? It's taken as red, like, you know, can you put a document together? Can you work with AI? And I think they'll increasingly, if you're unable to, as a youngster or a student, you're going to have problems going forward because there'll be an expectation coming forward that you do know your way around AI, you know how to make it work for you. So I think it's important to, to educate from that perspective. Not necessarily always the juniors, but also the people who are hiring, how important it is to integrate that AI into their systems. 